the dot product is one of two ways to multiply vectors together. We're going to be talking about the other one, the cross product, in a later video. So when you do math with scalars, you do 3 times 4, for example, um, it's not uncommon to write 3 times 4 or to write 3 times 4. Um, when we're working with vectors, these actually will be denoting different operations. So be careful, you can't use them interchangeably uh, here. So what is a dot product? Um, the dot product is also referred to as the inner product, and it's going to generate a scalar. Okay, So if I have a vector here, let's call this A, and then I have a vector here, let's call this B, and I have some angle between them, which is going to be theta. So if I take a dot product of these two vectors, what a dot product really does is it kind of multiplies uh, you can tell by looking at the extremes. So if I have the two vectors pointing in exactly the same way, if I have A here and I have B as the full thing, if I multiply these together in this situation, then the um, dot product will simply be the magnitude of A times the magnitude of B. If, on the other hand, I multiply vector A by vector B like this, and there's a right angle between them, then the dot product of this, so this would be a dot b would equal the product of the magnitudes. Here, a dot b is actually going to be equal to 0. So this should give you some sense, right, that, OK, well, that means that the dot product is always going to be between 0 and simply a straight up product of their magnitudes. So what we're really doing is we're multiplying one, you know, one of these vectors by the kind of the component that is pointing in the same direction as itself. Um, it doesn't matter which direction you go, the dot product is commutative, um, but you can kind of get a sense here of what's going on. And it's going to output a scalar. So, for example, in Mar if you've played Mario Kart before, right? Mario Kart, you have these, these speed boosts. Um, I, I, don't, I read that you know, the way this speed boost works is with uh, a dot product, because the vector of the speed boost points in this direction. Uh, and depending on what angle you go over this speed boost, um, it will actually boost you, you know, in this direction of the, the, the speed boost points, but by a different amount, right? Where the way to maximize your speed boost going over it is to go over it exactly along this vector um, that points in the same direction as it. Uh, but it will say, well, if you're going off at an angle, then what we're going to do is we're going to boost you still in that direction, but by less. And if you were hypothetically able to go over it, at a you know right angle to it, you would experience no speed boost. So uh, let's look at what that's going to be. So if I want to multiply the two components together that point in the same direction, the one we're going to do is say, well, if I drop down this here and get a right angle here, I'm going to have a component of vector a that points like this. So I know this vector, vector a, has a magnitude of mag a. So that means that this vector is going to be magnitude of a times the cosine of theta, right? And this vector here is going to be of length magnitude b. So from this, you might be able to guess that the dot product of a dot b is going to be equal to the magnitude of a times the magnitude of b times the cosine of the angle between them. And that will allow you to generate these two boundary conditions uh, where they, they lie on top of each other, they're parallel, um, and the case where they are uh, perpendicular. Okay. Uh, now, there's also a way to do this with components. So if you don't have, you know, you don't necessarily have their magnitudes of the angle between them, or you don't want to find them. Let's say I just have two vectors. Uh, if I have vector a is equal to ax, uh, oops, ax, uh, I want a y and a z. And you can keep this going. This can be an n-dimensional operation. You can keep on going all the way forever. And you have another vector b, which will be uh, bx, by, and bz. Then the dot product between them of a dot b is going to be equal to ax bx plus ay by plus az bz. So basically, the dot product is just the way you would almost think matrix multiplication should work, right? Where you multiply the corresponding uh, terms, components, and then you just add them all together. And this will give you a scalar, just like this will, because you're working with magnitudes. So uh, you know, together, we can kind of write this as, OK, well, that means that ax bx plus a y b y plus a z b z is going to be equal to the magnitude of a times the magnitude of b 
times the cosine of the angle between them. Uh, this is something that uh, I recommend if you're interested. Uh, try to prove this. See if you can prove it. It's, it's uh, a good exercise. So there you go. Let's look at an example now. So I'm just going to clear all this away. So for example, let's say that I want to find the dot product of two vectors. Let's say I want to do 4, negative 6, 9. And I want to dot it with 2, 5, negative 3. So the way we're going to do this, I'm going to do 4 times 2 is 8. Negative 6 times 5 is negative 30. And then 9 times negative 3 is negative 27. Okay. So I have negative 57 here plus 8. I'm going to get negative 49. So that's going to be my dot product. And then I want to find the angle between. So how am I going to do that? Well, what I can do is I say, well, I already know that a dot b is equal to the magnitude of vector a times the magnitude of vector b times the cosine of the angle between them. So if I just want this angle, then that means that theta is going to be equal to the arc cosine of uh, this dot product, a dot b, divided by the magnitude of a times the magnitude of b, like that. So I have to find out what the magnitude of a and b are because I already know what the dot product is. It's negative 49. So the magnitude of a is going to be the square root, which I should write, the magnitude of a of 16 plus 64 plus 81. And uh, from here, we're going to say, OK, well, we're going to have uh, 16 uh, plus 64 is going to be 80, 80 plus 81 is going to be the square root of 161. The square root of 161 is going to be around 12.68 uh, or so. But I'll just probably just put it in as a square root like that. And then we want the magnitude of b. So the magnitude of b equals, sure, equals there, uh, the square root of 4 plus 25 plus 9. So we have 29 plus 9 is the square root of 38. So what I'm going to do now is put all of this together. So I'm going to get theta equals the arc cosine of negative 49 divided by the square root of 161 times 38. Um, and then you put this in a calculator. So we have negative 49 divided by the square root of 161 times 38. And we get about 128 points, we'll say 0.8 degrees, uh, like that. All right, so uh, that's how we would find the angle between two vectors uh, in addition to, to finding their dot product. Um, so that's that's dot product. Uh, we want to go a little bit further, though. We don't want to just end there because there's something else that you can do that kind of relates to dot product, and that's the idea of projection. Okay. Now, there's uh, two kinds of projections that we're going to talk about. We're going to talk about scalar projections and vector projections. Okay. So... The idea of projection is we want to find, if I have two vectors again, so let's say I have a like this, so I have uh, vector a here, and this is going to be of length magnitude a, and then I have an another vector here, which is vector b. Okay. Note I, I intentionally drew this not along the x-axis, because b and a should both be in just arbitrary directions. They might be along the, the x-axis, they don't have to be. So I have vector magnitude of vector b here. And, uh, separated by angle of theta. So the idea of the projection is to find um, the component of one vector in the direction of another. Okay. So what we're going to do in order to figure that out is I'm going to say, well, the component that I'm looking for right, is right here. So this component is going to be magnitude of a times the cosine of theta. Okay, where theta, again, is the angle between the two. So this is our scalar projection. Okay, So the scalar projection is just a magnitude. Scalar projection can be negative, Okay, even though it is just a kind of a length. Um, it can be negative if we have this over here. right? If A was pointing over here and it projects down onto B in the opposite direction, you're going to get a negative scalar projection. So that's the scalar projection. I'm going to use the notation of uh, lowercase p with a subscript of ab for projection of a onto b, and that equals the magnitude of a times the cosine of theta. Okay, But to get the vector rep projection, what I need to do is take this magnitude and make it into a vector that actually points along b. So if we want to get a vector to point in a certain direction, right, I can just multiply it by a unit vector in that direction. So if I want to make you know something of length 2 that points in the 
x direction. I say, okay, well, let's say 2 i hat. Right, and that points in the next direction. So we need to generate a unit vector for the b direction. So the unit vector for the b direction is simply going to be uh, vector b divided by its magnitude. Right, this will give a vector of length one of unit length that points still in the direction of b, preserves the 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 length of it. So that allows us to then write that the vector projection of a onto b is equal to the scalar projection times the unit vector in the direction of b. Okay, and this is our vector projection. Um, and yeah, vector projection is useful uh, in a lot of things. Um, things like, you know, if we're doing, uh, for example, the pops to mind is, is work in physics, right? We want to know the component that's pointing in the same direction if you're, you're forcing a box up a ramp or something like that. Uh, so let's, let's do, a, do an example here. Um, let's say... <clears throat> Uh, let's say I have a vector b, and I'm going to tell you the components of this one. So it's 8, negative 5, 3. And then I have vector a, which has a magnitude of 10, 10 units. And let's say that the angle between these two vectors is 70 degrees. Okay, I want to find the vector projection of a onto b. So what I'm going to do is I need a couple things. So first what I'm going to do is I'm going to find the magnitude of b. This will help me to get a unit vector. So the magnitude of b is going to be 64 plus 25 plus 9 square rooted. So it's going to be the square root of 98, um, which means the unit vector in the b direction is going to be equal to vector b divided by the magnitude of vector b. And that's going to give me 1 over the square root of 98 times 8, negative 5, 3. Okay. And then from there, I can just basically plug into my equation, right? So in this in decimal form, um, uh, well, I'll, I'll plug it in first. So in plugging into my equation, right, I have P projection of A onto B equals the scalar projection of A onto B times the cosine of the angle between them. So, uh, oh, times, sorry, not the cosine of the angle between them. What am I saying? I'm thinking about uh, substituting it already. Times the unit vector, right? So B over mag B. Okay, so this we know is going to be equal to the magnitude of A times the cosine of the angle between them, and then I multiply that by B over the magnitude of vector B. So then I put all of this stuff in, put all of it together, um, and you get 2.76, 1.73, and 1.04, hopefully. I think that's right. Uh, and that is projections. Um, another thing that's kind of, you know, similar to dot product in that you're finding something that points kind of in the same direction as another vector. And the dot product is really doing a product of a vector with the component of the other vector, which points in the same direction. Okay, and that is dot product.